Hi, this is Suzette for Cloudy Sky Today channel and for day two, travel from Cocoa Beach up to Amelia Island and then stayed in Tallahassee for the night. Now, after reviewing the map again, I noticed there were some like Mount Dora Lighthouse, which was towards the middle of the state, but I did not see that one. I started at Cape Canaveral or Cocoa Beach and I noticed a sign when I was leaving, home of the original seven astronauts. So, hey, you know, I got to see something. From Cocoa Beach, we went to the Ponce de Leon Inlet Lighthouse. I mean, it has that coral look to it. Very beautiful. I checked and it had 203 steps. And after my, you know, climb of only a hundred and something step on my legs being in pain, I decided I wasn't going to climb it. But take some wonderful pictures from the parking lot and from the nearby park. Now, I did find a little bit of history that... Um, this was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1998, and this is also from that Ponce Inlet.org website. It is actually, as they quote in, I'm going to quote it, conveniently located 10 miles south of Daytona, you know, the world's most famous beach. Of course, I'm just taking pictures, different views. This is from the parking lot. Unfortunately, the power line and a little bird is in the way. And this is from a nearby park. So if you just made a day trip to this, you could, you know, picnic in the park. And it wasn't that crowded, so you actually could social distance. I just couldn't climb again. But yeah, I did like this one that it wasn't too, too crowded. There's their welcome sign, Ponce de Leon Inlet Lighthouse. I believe this is the Lightkeeper's House. And just a little, you know, view from the parking lot of the grounds of the lighthouse and the nearby park. I saw this in the nearby park. To me, it looks like a dog. What do you think? Let me know. But it does look like a dog to me. I don't know. If you see something else, please let me know. Now, I had to take this view because there was this, you know, memorial. And if you look, you see the lighthouse between the memorial. It's a VA memorial site. And there's a still of it. Now, going north, we hit Daytona Beach. Now, Daytona Beach is known where people drive on the beach and those little things right here are actually parking spots where people can park on the beach, you know, tailgate from the trunk of their car. To me, it's not a very beautiful beach, but it's known for driving on the beach. What surprised me was this side, where this sign right here, this is a pedestrian side. There is no driving on that side. And I have a feeling it's because of those condominiums they built up right there. They don't want people driving on the beach. And they just put the showers right there where people can get to shower. They have a nice little pier. You can go out, I guess. And there's their sign, Daytona Beach, rural's most famous beach. From Daytona, we went up to St. Augustine. Actually, it's Anastasia Island. Now, this lighthouse had 219 steps to reach the observation deck. And according to the St. Augustine Lighthouse, you know, there are eight landings, one with a bench, and you can rest and let other people pass you by. Well, this lighthouse and museum was very crowded. So most of these shots... You know, I just walked around the exterior because there was a lot of people in their parking lot. And, you know, these times I wasn't going to be 
in close proximity with all these people. Even though they were wearing masks, they still didn't want to be in close proximity. As you can see, this is the surface entrance. This is where that lovely shot, let's go back, was taken. You get the lighthouse and you have the, I believe the keeper's house and the muse assistant keeper's house. Because I, I wonder why this one had more than one house. So, you know, hey, I checked their website and that's what it says. A little history about the watchtower and the lighthouse where it says, sometimes before 1586, Spanish settlers constructed a wooden watchtower on Anastasia Island at the entrance to St. Augustine's Port. You know, by 1737, the Spanish tower was constructed from Coquina that was quarried nearby on the island. A guardhouse and chapel were later added. This tower served as a navigational landmark for Spanish St. Augustine 1737-1763, British St. Augustine 1763-1784, and Spanish St. Augustine when it again became a Spanish colony in 1784-1821. The United States restored the Coquina Tower in 1824 and added whale oil lamps and a keeper's house. When its first keeper, John Andrew, lit the lamps, the old Spanish watchtower became the first true lighthouse in Florida. The old lighthouse stood near this sign facing the ocean for 143 years until it collapsed into the sea due to coastal erosion in 1880. So, wow. Conk Island to the east did not exist until the modern inlet was drenched, was dredged in 1939. This remains of the whole lighthouse under Salt Run were surveyed in 2002 by archaeologists from the St. Augustine Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. And an interesting fact on their website, they also look at, they also explore shipwrecks. So I did go out to the St. Augustine Yacht Club because this is where the Salt Run is, still is. And this is where they said the remains of the old St. Augustine Lighthouse was. I guess the original, original one. I had to take this lovely bird, you know, just relaxing. There I am taking a picture of it and it's being all shy and all. This is the salt run. You can see all the little boats or yachts or whatever you want to call them. When I say yak, it's not like I'm saying yak. But, okay. But a lot of people are fishing off the dock at the yacht club and I asked you know like does this go out to the ocean and I wasn't sure what it was called it was like yeah this is the salt run it goes out to the intracoastal and the intracoastal goes out to sea so a lovely fisherman and his son were out there fishing there were other people fishing they were catching fish I was very surprised I was like wow but yeah salt run I guess it's an estuary we would call it in the south like in South Florida you know, when you go to an eco park, they have those estuaries with the mangroves and all that stuff. So I guess it's something very similar. And of course, you can also get a view of this lighthouse, the St. Augustine Lighthouse, from the salt run. Because this was taken from there. More of the salt run. Now, from St. Augustine... We drove up to Amelia Island Lighthouse. Looking at the Fernandina Beach, not Fernanda, Fernandina Beach website, they said that this lighthouse has six to nine steps. As much as it was doable, they do not allow you to climb. Plus, they close all tours due to COVID. So I tried to get a shot at this lighthouse, and you can see it peeking above the trees. And you can see the bottom of it because of this long, mossy, long moss that's on the trees. So I have a little poem. It's called Amelia Island Lighthouse. A long drive north to Fernandina Beach to find the Amelia Island Lighthouse. It took miles of highway and road to find it. Round in circles of this well-manicured neighborhood, where between some houses are a lane that led to the lighthouse. Behind the lock gate, 
Behind some trees, trees with long, mossy bears obscure the view. The top of the lighthouse peeks over the tree as if to say, I see you. And one of the things I noticed that this was on the United States Coast Guard. The Coast Guard at one point, I guess, handled all the lighthouses, but some of them get handed over to historic societies. And then it's not, some of them are not active lighthouses. There are some that are private that are active. So it's interesting read looking up the lighthouses of Florida. Now this park, you know, outside of, Amelia Island. It's Egan's Creek Park. And it was actually a very interesting park because they had a lot of um, their exercise um, equipment. It was just interesting to me. I didn't take pictures of that. I don't know why. But even the formation they have of the grass was very interesting. So don't forget to subscribe, give this video a like, thank you.